Yeah, David and Crystal, I don't see them right now. Oh, because Crystal hurt her knee. Okay, um, where, where's, um, who can, who can, let's see, it. let's do Roy and Darlene, just hold up your hand, they could see you and you can relay, you can relay any questions to them. Um, there is a, a pretty long line in, in the Sozo ministry, but the good news is, it's finally actually happening where people are going through the, uh, and getting Sozos, and we're looking to leaders being regular in, in Sozo, I saw Beth yesterday from, uh, uh, Washington, D.C., Sozo area, the whole region over there, and she was just doing awesome. Oh, that's who that was. Uh, I was so intoxicated. And she came up and gave me this hug, and I'm looking at her like, do I know you? <laughs> it's okay, honey. Oh, boy. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So, See, I triggered it, and it just came right out. Yeah, yeah. No so, Lord, we just thank you for everything you want to say today. We thank you, Lord, for your what, everything you want to say today being said. And, Lord, we just ask that it would be so on point for every person in this place. We ask for Holy Spirit just to speak to each heart and each life, that they would know that you've been listening to their prayers They'd know that you've been speaking to their life, that they would know not only are you near to them, but you're looking forward to, to being an intimate part of their life. We thank you for everything you want to speak today in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. Amen. So we, we, we spent an awesome time, and uh, it was really, really exciting just, just being in the glory. And then uh, Dan Muller, I, I got to see him this morning. And uh, so our hearts are full with lots of stuff, but this is what the Lord's really put on our heart for today. And uh, you guys might remember two weeks ago when Tracy first got this word, it was uh, to, to get off my favor. And uh, the funny thing about favor is a lot of times we look at favor and we go like, what is this thing? What is on their life? And, and we start trying to imitate uh, what, what others are doing now. See, it's not that we imitate what others do to get favor. We imitate their heart. And it's harder to catch somebody's heart than it is to catch their actions. So like when you see somebody, you have to kind of look way past the actions on the outside and get to the heart of the matter. Because the heart is where the treasure is. And if you can get the heart of your leaders, if you can get the heart of those around you, if we can get your heart, and then we can start tugging on that God side of you, then we're going to see blossoming in this area of favor. So the first thing uh, Tracy wrote down here is what is favor? So uh, grace Favor and kindness are synonymous words for favor. Grace is oftentimes called unmerited favor, right? Grace is the unmerited favor of God, which means undeserved. I don't deserve this, but God is just so good to me. Now, here's the thing. When I was a young Christian, and I was kind of Pentecostal, so we didn't believe God was good to us. In fact, we had believed if you were walking the line like Johnny Cash... Then God might be good to you if he didn't smite you because you looked the wrong way. And so that was kind of our original heritage, at least my original heritage. And what happened is I had to learn the goodness of God. I had to learn about the love of God. So favor. And, and that just brings me to a, a unction. And <laughs> I'm an unctioner if you don't know. <laughs> so... No, I did not forget. I'm asking Papa how to say this because, um, you know, my, my sister-in-law used to sing this song to me, right? And it really made me fear the Lord. It, and it, some of you may have heard it before. It's like, God's going to get me for that. There's no place to run and hide. He knows where I'm at. She used to sing it to me all the time when I was a little girl. Um, and it really put the fear of the Lord in me. But yet, at any time... Whoa, I did something that was wrong. I didn't know how to find the love. I didn't know how to find the forgiveness because I felt like God was a God that was going to get me for anything I did. Now, obviously her heart was to help me stay walking in the right line of things in life, right? But when, we, but when I didn't, I didn't know how to come back to Daddy because I just felt like, you know, he was a God that was going to get me for what I did wrong. Um, and I want to... Um, 
tell some people here and set you free right now. But that is not true. And that if you are assuming that everything that happened in your life is because of God, you need to take responsibility for your own actions. God is a God, and God is in control. Yes, he is. But if someone overdoses on drugs, do you think God wanted them to do that? Are we going to blame God for their death? If we make mistakes because things have been given to us and things have been given to us, and we, me, myself, have screwed things up, should I sit here and say God was out to get me? Or should I say, Tracy, boy, you were a knucklehead. Daddy, please bring those blessings back. I learned, and I won't do it again. Because if you want to say that God did it, you're never going to be in your identity that God's created for you. You won't be able to stay walking in it. Because that lie is going to always be a lie on your shoulder that's not true. Amen. That's awesome. So grace is uh, unmerited favor, undeserved favor. It's always after you. People talk a lot about grace. Uh, but favor is, is like it's, it's like when somebody is favorable towards or leaning towards or uh, to share a benefit, uh, they're, they're permanently used to the, to the Lord's favor. Uh, it's kind of like favor is like being the Lord's go-to man or woman. You know, when you see somebody that has favor, it's like, why does God always use blank, that person? Why is God opening those kind of doors for that person? Favor is one of those things uh, Jake's used to... Pe- Uh, T.D. Jakes used to say, favor ain't fair. Because favor isn't about fairness. Favor is about utilization. See, if you don't use the grace that is supplied, that is available, then grace begins to find somebody else. Are you my go-to man? Go do it, Joseph. And Joseph's like, well, um, you know, I was going to go to the wedding, but I had a lot to do today. And grace goes, okay, I'll find someone else. Joseph, thanks anyway. And grace. Grace skips right over. But grace is not intentionally leaving anyone behind. Grace is always looking for an opportunity. The eyes of the Lord. You guys hear me quote this all the time because I just love it. The eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the earth seeking a heart that's truly his. If your heart gets in alignment with the yes of heaven. Patricia King was talking about the yes of heaven. I say yes to small things, little things. And little things become explosive in the earth the seed of the small thing the seed of the small thing god wants to place small things in action in your life so that small things become become oak trees of righteousness so you could look and say i remember when i planted that thing look at it now i planted that now it's 40 feet tall and three feet thick and it's not going anywhere that's the thing that you we want to produce in our life is of those seeds of righteousness. So it's like being God's go-to person. It's like when I go to this person, they say yes, and they get it done. And heaven is always able to pour through them. So it's like an easy way in. God wants you to be his easy way into the earth. He wants you to be his easy person. When he says pray for that, he wants you to be the person that's breaking through because you're his easy way in. Favor comes to you because you say yes to God and you're his easy way in. It's like so simple, guys. Yeah? No, not yet? Uh Uh-oh. Give me the mic. Okay. Oh, it happens to me when I make fun of her, so it's funny. So here's an interesting thing. Um, I was thinking about this. Jesus grew in favor. That's a very fascinating statement if you just really sit back and look at it in fact i'll I'll just read you real quick uh in luke 2 verse 40 it says and the child grew and he became strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of god was upon him okay the grace of god was upon him there it is he was filled with wisdom but he was growing and then it says down in verse 52 at the end of the chapter it says and jesus increased In wisdom and stature and in the favor with God and favor with men. Now the interesting thing about favor is it's something you grow into. If you don't believe that, it's it's fine. I think I could believe it for me really easy. But to believe it for Jesus is another story. 
The Son of God had to grow in the basic things that all men have to grow in. He had to learn how to grow with wisdom with men and wisdom with God and favor with men and favor with God. And he grew in it. Why? Because he exercised it. He exercised it. Okay, and here's, here's a really good scripture here. Hebrews 5.12. Some of you guys know this from a different teaching, but this is powerful. For when... For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that someone teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and to become such that have need of milk and not solid food. For everyone that uses milk is still unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food, everybody say solid food. Solid food is about doing and not just knowing. Solid food belongs to them that are of full age, even those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So how do you discern what is favor? Because you've exercised, you've exercised, in, because by reason of use, you've exercised. Do you see this, guys? It's, it's kind of like, you, you, a lot of times we're like, one day I'm going to be big and strong, and you don't go to the gym. It's like, it's not going to happen. You know, every New Year's comes, every New Year's goes. I know everybody buys gym memberships, but they've already gone. How many times have you gone to the gym? By reason of use, we, faith is a muscle, guys. Here it is. Faith is a muscle. And when you begin to use your faith, believing that God is speaking to you, when you begin to utilize, you begin to see. I hit God, right? I hit the mark. I was in the will of God. Look what God has done. Look at God's faithfulness. Look at God's availability. Look at God's heart toward me. Look at God's loving kindness. Look how favor is following me everywhere I go. Goodness and mercy is chasing me down. And when you see that time after time after time, by reason of use, you have a history. The men and women of God, I was thinking about this because where I believe we're headed I was watching men and women that have gone on and they've stepped in by reason of use into the smallest things and begin to open larger doors. God wants to open incredible doors for you, but those doors are attached to obedience. Obedience means listening and hearkening, hearing and obeying. And then even if I had another dirty word that's much worse than obedience is the word submission. Submission... The difference between obedience and submission is like when you ask your child, hey, son, take out the trash. And they kick the can and they're oh, fine. And they take out the trash. You're kind of like, well, that's good. You were quite obedient. There's a difference when your heart locks in to the privilege of being able to serve. Then submission is, 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 is uh, that's submission, guys. When your heart locks in and says, Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. You know, I tried, to, I tried to do that, and I really tried to do it, especially in the really humbling tasks. My, my best, my best uh, sermon analogies have come around this septic pit in my front yard. It's like, look at this privilege to serve God right here. And I tell everybody, and you, could, you can ask them all, how's my attitude? Everything else might stink, but my attitude's in check. No pun intended. Or maybe it was. So, why is it so hard to think... Okay, so here's, here's, here's the first question, right? What is your favor? What's the favor God's placed on your life? Right? Everybody in here has identity, and that identity makes you prime target for certain favor. And then if you grow in that favor, it opens the door for other areas. There's certain favor that's on Tracy, and there's certain favor that's on me. And then there's certain favor that's on you. So the question is that we don't often enough think about is what is the favor on my life? What am I created to do? Why am I here? And what does God intend to use me for? And when we start thinking along those lines, we'll start exercising our favor. It's kind of like 
What are you here for? If you're an athlete, you're not going to be pumping weights. You're going to start doing a very different regiment. The regiment in your life should match up the favor on your life. Because when you do things that match kingdom, the kingdom of alignment that's on you, what God has built you for. It's like certain people, uh, there was a spiritual movie we were watching and this guy was like, you're made to run a mile. And the guy's like, no, I want to run the 400. And he's like, but you're not made to run the 400. You want to be the fastest in this little dash, but you're built for the mile. And he, 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 they like fight a bit and he goes, okay, good, you'll run the 400. And he loses. And he says, why, you know, I told you, you're built for the mile. And if you don't learn what you're built for, you'll keep banging your head going in a direction that God didn't make you for. It's like trying to be somebody else just as who you are. And you can keep trying, but you're going to keep being second place. It's okay to be second place. It's a silver medal. Yay, you. But God intentionally has a, has a position and a race for you to win. And you to get the gold. See, if you want the gold, you have to run your race. You can't run anyone else's race. Favor has a, wants to find you in the place of your race. And when you find your race, you find your lap, you find your distance, you find what you're made for, then, those, then the, the agreement of heaven comes down. And that's why I challenge everybody. Coming to church is not something to make you feel better or get something alone. It's something that you put your hands to the plow and you don't look back and you go after God and you say, Lord, I'm planted and I'm rooted. Deep roots, deep roots. Deep roots in the house of God. That's one thing I could pride myself in. If I, I can't pride myself in many things. But the house of God, I, I committed myself. And sometimes I was like, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. How can I know what I'm doing in a year? And my pastor used to do these horrible things to us that would torment me so bad. He would go like, everybody in this leadership class, I want you to commit for the next year. And then when we left the church of God, he actually said, I want everyone in here to commit two years to me. And I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to be in two years. I don't know where I'm going to be next week. And I, I know ministry. I know kingdom of God is in my heart. And I know I want to, I feel like we're supposed to start a church sometime. I'm, I'm not in a hurry. I want the perfect will of God. And, and so it was tough. But knowing those things put me in position to have my own. Being faithful with what's another man's, the Bible says clearly, how can you give to someone who can't take up care of what's somebody else's? If you want something big in your life, big, I'm not talking about some tiny thing that anybody can do. I'm talking about if you want something large and you're believing God for big things, it's all about the, the ability to steward well what's already been given. And then he gives more. And then there's steward that. And then more, and then he stewarded that. And as we continue stewarding, we find ourselves automatically, autopilot, brought by angels into the will of God. So what is your favor? What's your race? What were you made for? And I believe there's probably plenty of people that would say, I don't have any idea. You're the two mile? Race built for distance. There you go. I'm built for distance. Come on. So here's the deal, guys, right? I want you to think about that. What is your favor? What did God place you? And every time you do, you have the most success. And people go, whoa, check that out. It's like a lot of people can't answer that question. I asked my wife, and that's how I knew. We have to think about it. Because when we start focusing on our strengths, we can let somebody backfill our weaknesses. If all the people in here knew what you were strong at, and you said, that's all I need to do is what I'm good at. And everybody else started saying, well, I'm not good at that, but I'm good at this. <laughs> we don't need to be good at everything. We could just be good at what we're good at and come together in one line and just march the kingdom of God in an advance. And I believe that that's what today's all about, is finding your favor, even though the title is Get Off My Favor. The titles get off my favor because you got your own. That's why. 
and, and I, we want to help you learn what your own favor is. Because I was sitting here, and, and this, this all came to me through the Lord because I'm sitting there and like, there's, I get calls sometimes and I get Facebook messages and I get people asking me to do things. And I do my best to do what everybody asks me. Like, I do my best. I love being submitted. It makes it easy for my life. But there's things I have to also accomplish that are outside of all those requests. Um, so, I'm, so all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just starts speaking. Tracy, you need to tell them to get off your favor. They got their own. They can do it. And I was like, <laughs> I never thought about that. And when I don't think about things, I know it's the Holy Spirit, right? Because that's not the way I would talk to somebody, right? Sure. So, um, so basically, and I was like, well, Lord, why do they feel like they don't have enough faith, faith or they don't have enough favor themselves to be able to just do this themselves? And, and, and as, as he was saying, your faith needs to be exercised. So that was one of the answers. The other answer was, you know, when our heart condemns us, you know, we have trouble trusting in Papa. So live a life where your heart's not condemning you. Live a life that's pure and holy. And you can be humble and still be determined in God's assignment of favor over your life. There's a balance to that. I can be a very humble person, but when I'm in an assignment and I know it's an assignment, there is nothing backing me down. And that's still humility because I can bring it in humility, but, but know, what, know, what Papa's, know what Papa wants and don't settle for anything less than what you know Papa's already showed you is the end result. Don't let people tell you it can't happen. That's a bunch of uh, bogus. Trust me. People can do things if they want to do things. The county office will do things if they want to do things for the building. You know, when we, we have our meeting on the 20th, so everyone keep us in prayer. So we're going down there to make sure we get all our permits and everything finalized. And it was really an honor to hear somebody say, well, we need to take Tracy with us. Um, if we don't, you know, we need to take Tracy with us because of her favor. So... Hold on, now, and this is, this, this, is, this is good. This is good because they see something that, I, that, I, that the Lord's graced me with, okay? And I'm grateful for that. But I really don't think I need to go. I think God's already went before us. That's where my faith is. So when I walk into that county office on the 20th with them, I'm just hooking up with the connection of the kingdom already that's already going to be there before I get there, and everything's going to be yes. You know what I'm saying? So you just need to know. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but really what happens, what hinders us from really knowing what, what our favor is, is um, our hearts condemning us because we feel like we can't stand bold before the Lord. And disappointments that try to discourage us. They try to beat us down from disappointments. You know, you have not because you ask not. Trust me, I am not, look, I am a, well, let me be careful how I say that. I have been a person of fear. Caution has been my life. You know why? Because I'm with a man of faith with no caution. Do you see what I'm saying? So I got to, I got to, I got to be, I got to be, I got to be, well, it's the truth, right? But we got to balance each other. He has all this faith and wants to run and all this stuff, right? I'm like, whoa, slow down, no! I got fear, we can't do this, you know? But um, caution is not fear. Sometimes caution is good. God's taught me the difference, but this is how I used to be, you know? And, um... I'm not, I'm not there like that sometimes a little bit. I need to pray my way out, but, but I'm not like that. Like, thank God we're all growing in the Lord. But I can share this uh, because I want you all to learn from it, okay? You know, so now I just have this caution. I don't always have so much fear now. I have more faith. And, and actually, it's kind of nice because he's kind of come a little, he don't have fear, but he's kind of, you know, been thinking more about things. So... <laughs> really good because I feel like I can be freer now in faith because now he's thinking and I believe my husband's way smarter than me so <laughs> so, so but um but um which, which which one okay so good so um you know so disappointments we have not because we ask not and sometimes we have to realize I mean 
I want to go back on something I said earlier. There are things sometimes that happen to, to God, to, from God, to help us grow. But a lot of times there's a difference in your knowing, in your knower. You know, because um, but what I was trying to do earlier was really help people be free from blaming God for stuff that's not God's. But then there are things that come in our life, like, like for instance, when God told me my house was going to burn down. For three weeks in advance, the Lord told me, and I told my husband, I told my daughter, I told my son. Rip the knobs off the oven. Oh, I was oh, crazy. I was crazy, you guys. I, pull, I wouldn't let people cook. I pulled all the electric knobs off of everything. I was unplugging <laughs> microwaves. I was unplugging toasters at 9 o'clock at night. Everybody had to be in bed. Nobody was cooking. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so, because the whole time I'm like, I'm like, I knew the Lord told me my house was going to burn down. And three weeks later, on December 21st, oh, I got to tell you this part too. This was so funny. It was the only year I was done early for Christmas. So we lost all the gifts. So on Christmas, well, they were smoked. So, you know, we wanted, we thought about giving out smoked gifts. You know, they smelled good. But um, what was funny was on Christmas Eve, I'm in the mall shopping, and I threw my hands up, and I just, I'm in the mall, and all these people were around me. I was just like, thank you, Jesus! You know, whoa, because I'm not shy when I'm out in front of people. So, um, so I'm just praising God on, on Christmas Eve. I was like, if you just wanted me out here on Christmas Eve, couldn't you just told me without burning the house down? And I'm having this whole conversation with God at, at Macy's. You know, I love Macy's. Macy's is so anointed. Go into Macy's, man. God is everywhere. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so, so um, like, like yesterday, for instance, you know, we were out and we were at Panera. And um, I was like, I go up and I'm like, I asked this, the manager, are green teas refillable? And the manager says, no. So I was like, oh, okay. So I went back and I sat down for a minute because, one, I'm not really drinking caffeine. So I wanted to figure out if I really wanted more green tea first. And then, yeah, and then David drank half my green tea that I did want, so I wanted some more, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to get more. So I go up to the register with my, my cup and my credit card, and I, like, show the guy both of them. And the guy's like, and this is a different guy working there. Um, the manager was somewhere else, and he looks at me, and he just says, you know, I'm going to refill it this time for you. He's like, okay, thank you. I was willing to pay. He's like, no, I'm just going to refill it this time, but if you want another one, you're going to have to pay. So I go back over to Bonnie. I'm like, hey, Bonnie, he just gave me a free green tea. I didn't even ask. You know, it was just crazy. So then later I go up there, and we're still sitting there three hours later talking, and, and all of us that were there were just talk, talking. Yeah, you know, three hours talking. That's easy. Um, and then, <laughs> and then um, I, um, I told, I was like, I was like thinking, I want another cookie. I shared half my cookie with Gary. So, so now I want another cookie, right? And he's trying to tell me a cookie's $1.99. I was like, okay, $1.99. It's kind of high for a cookie. I don't know if I want it that bad. Because I'm really being cautious in everything I spend now. You know, I'm asking God, should I do this? What should I do? You know, and all this. And I love this place that I'm at. So I'm just like, well, Lord, I really want a cookie. You know, so I said to the guy, well, I really want to get a cookie. He says, okay, I'm just going to give you the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a different guy. <laughs> but then I went back to Bonnie and I was like, Bonnie, I got my cookie for free. <laughs> So it was just favor. Like, I just told the guy I wanted a cookie. You know what I'm saying? It was just crazy favor, like little things like God's just showing you. And it wasn't like, let me balance. It wasn't like a flirtatious thing or nothing like that. It was completely like, oh, stop it. It was completely like just God's favor. You know, it wasn't like the guy was giving me eye contact. It was none of that. It was just God's favor. Because, you know, because first off, if that was even taking place, I would have told him, no, I don't want the free cookie. I want to pay for it. Because I'm not going to receive something through a lust spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not healthy. Because now I'm accepting something on, from somebody. Now. <laughs> you preaching now. Ugh. So, 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 um, so <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, okay, so, okay, so here we go. Get off my favor because you have your own. You have not because you ask not, James 4. From where comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not from here, even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. 
You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may spend it upon your lusts. So here it's two main things, right, is that we get frustrated when we're not receiving in our life because we were made. Listen, God made us to be able to give. And when we when we hit frustration in our life, it's because we feel like we should be giving. We should be further along than we are because we we were made to give. And so what happens is we start looking at others and what they're doing. And then that starts a contention in us and a fighting. Because the contention came because you didn't look to the right guy. That guy can't give you favor. That guy can't help you get where God wants you to go. He's actually holding back because you stopped asking. Because you, uh, you stopped exercising. And so he's like, hey, you ready yet? What's your favor has to do with, are you ready to actually exercise the gifts that I've placed in you? That gift that he's placed in you is meant to be exercised. And so as we start pushing into the things of God, we start realizing the benefits of heaven. You know, and sometimes people get nervous when you talk about benefits. But I, no good Jew would ever buy good news that didn't have benefits. And the reality is that in his presence, his fullness of joy... And at his right hand, it says clearly, there's pleasures forevermore. So we could get a tied, uh, you know, caught up and you don't want anything from heaven. But if God doesn't give you anything, then you don't have anything to give. So we could sit there and be caught up in our, the purity of our hearts. I get that. And I want you to stay pure in your heart. And the whole reason why we want to do this is to be a blessing to our region, a blessing to our families, a blessing to our friends. And we want to be able to do that, right? So... That typically goes without saying, but just for the sake of purity today, I'm going to make sure that I say it because it's very important that we realize why we're saying these things, why we're asking God for things. And God already knows because the two things he says is you have not because you ask not because you're not asking me. And then second thing he says is when you ask, you ask amiss. Which means you're not targeting the right person. You're not targeting the right will. You're not targeting the intention that I have for this thing. Like, I don't want to give you more money so you can do you more. I'm not looking for more of the wrong kind of you. I'm looking for more of the pure you. The guy that loves to give, the, lo the guy that loves to be a blessing, the guy that loves to see people smile, the guy that loves to make a difference. That guy, he can get everything that he wants. Because heaven is constantly, I, I just love uh, John 14, 15, 16. Constantly, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be given to you. Three chapters in a row. And then he goes in the Beatitudes. You guys should be getting all this. This is all from this last week, right? Beatitudes, he says clearly, if you ask it shall be given. If you feel like I don't get anything from God when I ask, it's clear right here in James. First of all, you're not asking me. Secondly, you're asking for the wrong intents, intentions. He's dealing with hearts, right? He doesn't hear our song. He doesn't see how high we jump. He doesn't see how loud we clap or scream. He doesn't see how good we play. You know, he sees the connection of our heart in the spirit. Because it's all he sees. He sees the purity of heart. He sees the heart that's far off. He wants to woo the heart far off in. And he wants to raise up the hearts that are close. So those hearts he wants to make himself strong in. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth. To find a man that's hearts purely his. So he can what? Make himself strong in him. He wants to pick you up. Put you on like a garment. And walk like victory. I got somebody right here. He puts on the coat and he just goes, this is what victory looks like. And he makes every step sound like heaven. He makes every step resound victory. He makes every step say, this guy cannot be trifled with. And that's the intention of heaven when you start getting into what he's doing. Why are we even in church? I, I went past the Elks Lodge this morning because I was going to see Dan in Millersville. And that pastor there is really awesome. He's, he's really going after God and the stuff. He's going after heaven and really wants uh, to make a really powerful change there. And he's really um, reaching out. So I thought it was a privilege for me um, to be able to connect. And as I'm driving, I look over at the Elks Lodge. And they got a lot of people that are congregating 
for the Elks Lodge. And I thought, maybe a church is there, but what if they're just having a good social club time? Some people just want a good social club. But I hope that you come with a better intention than to make friends. It's good to make friends, but it's more important that kingdom of God advances through you. I want to make friends. I want to be people's friends in here. I, want, I don't even want to be friends. I want to, be know, I want to know people in here in 20 years and go like, look what God's doing in their life. You know, that's what I want to be. I want to see legacy. I'm not just looking for friendship. I'm looking for inheritance. I'm looking for like a life lived and a legacy, just out, seeds just planted all around the world. In fact, Tracy Ann Loosely was here. Um, the last time she came, she just sensed destiny over this house. She ran to the back and she said, can you imagine all the seeds that are in here? She's talking about you guys planted all over the earth and the kind of things that are going to be released through them. So she's imagining if that's where we're at right now, imagine as you grow in, in the environment that's here. The environment gives you the ability to be what God's called you to be, right? And I know there's lots of churches like this. There's, there's lots of great places. We want to be everything you need to get you where you're, where you're called to be. But if we can't convince you that to not walk in sincerity of heart with God and know like when my conscience gets defiled, see eventually you stop living you stop living in condemnation and stop like, oh, let me not do that because it makes God mad. And you realize when I'm defiled, I don't walk in favor. When I'm defiled, I don't, I don't make good decisions. And so it's more important that I start realizing I don't want to break this consciousness where God is always around. God's always wanting me to speak to people because that's where I'm made for. I was made to breathe, like breathe heaven. In heaven, when you start breathing, it's presence. You were made to breathe his presence. Like, that's your essence. Like, he, he said, let's make man. And then he reaches down and kisses you and blows pneuma or ruach. He blo bro blows his breath and fills your lungs and you become living. Same as Ezekiel, right? The dry bones. They got everything together. Everybody wants to get everything together. Come on, guys. Let's get it together. You know, bone to bone. Sinews. We get the skin on it. They're standing up. Great army. Woohoo! We won, right? No, they're still dead. It doesn't matter if your whole life gets picture perfect, every dot, tittle, I crossed, every dot, I dotted, T crossed, everything's in order, woohoo, you're still going to be dead at the end of the day without the breath of God. That's why we have the true riches. The true riches come because in us, we have the ability to breathe life. Life is on our words, guys. Life is in our heart. And we can bless people with that because our intentions are to reproduce heaven in the lives around us. Amen? So, there you have it. You have not because you ask not, and you cannot obtain because you do not ask. And when you ask, you receive not because you ask missing or amiss. You ask like you're not aiming for the right target. The agreement of heaven is, hey, I want to bless you so that, you, so that I can... Release this, this uh, special favor on your life because I want you to do this. And you say, I want special favor to do this other thing. And he's like, that's not agreement. <laughs> I have a will. And if you agree with my will, I can give you what I want to give you. But if you want your will, then you're going to have to hold on and just get what comes. And that happens a lot. It happened in my life. I go, woohoo, I'm going to do this. And Tracy's like, did you pray? I was kind of like, yeah, yeah well, kind of. You know, and then eventually like, Psh, right on my face. I thought, this can't fail. We're going to do it. And then slowly the enemy came in, just stole all these things that would have helped make this. It was, I think it was our first business adventure. I did, I did a big flopping Psh, because basically um, I didn't listen to wisdom. You like that, don't you? That's terrible. She was like, I waited a long time for this. I'm just kidding. She, she would never say that. No, because when, when the Lord was showing me and I was trying to speak to him just so we could pray, like not to say, hey, honey, you, you're not doing this. Like, I would not ever do that. But I just wanted him to hear what I felt God was saying, and he was just 
in so much emotional, uh, like about the business and so much excitement that he couldn't hear. And, and I heard the Lord say, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to walk through this. You got to walk through this. See, so, so, well, but it was okay. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have changed those five years and fifty thousand dollars in debt for nothing. No, I mean, I'm being very honest when I say that. <laughs> Some people have been with me for a long time. Oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, it was five years because we had a five-year debt. But <laughs> I paid the bill, baby. I know. <laughs> But you know what? It was good because the Lord said my husband needed this. It was something he needed to learn. I needed to learn. And, and every time I wrote the check, I would just feel God's grace and mercy come over us. You know, I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like a training ground for us. And sometimes, you know, you know we had three real radical people get saved through that business. Oh, I got to tell you this story. No, no, you told me I can today. <laughs> I got to tell you. Okay, so we had, no, we had this business in Arundel Mills, right? This is hilarious, guys. And um, so w they require, Arundel Mills has rules and instructions you have to abide by in the contract. So he says that's what killed us, but that's not what I think killed us. <laughs> um, so on Sunday, you have to be open. So the whole goal was to have a, place where we could give people jobs okay because that was our heart back then as well as it is now with the thrift store so I was like well I need to hire somebody for Sunday and everybody we got working for us and everybody else I know like they are in church on Sundays and what am I going to do God and I heard the Lord say you are Buffy the vampire slayer <laughs> no I know this sounds really crazy guys but I gotta tell you this I, I literally heard the Lord say you're Buffy the vampire slayer and I was like what in the world does that mean, Papa? I'm Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'm just like, just like Patricia King said, I'm just like, okay, yes, I'll be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What does that mean? You know, because like I didn't know what it, I didn't, so Anna can vouch for this. She was involved in it. So I didn't know what it meant, right? So my next interview is with a guy, and uh, he is a vampire. <laughs> stuff he has like the black fingernails and he's talking to me about um the job he doesn't go to church on Sundays his family is Christian but he no longer goes to church he's at the college and they drink blood and I was like oh this is great God wants me to hire you <laughs> so I knew God wanted me to hire this guy that thought he had an identity crisis and he thought he was a vampire so I was like, now I'm gonna be Buffy. The, now I'm gonna be Buffy the Vampire Slayer, cause now I'm on. Now I'm on assignment. So, so now I see. So God was giving me the the knowledge, a word of knowledge ahead of time for what I was supposed to do. And you know, you can't not hear little things and just throw it to the side, guys, because every little thing has a meaning from Papa. You know, it sounds so silly to me. I could have ruled it out and think, you're weird. I'm not hiring you. You know what I mean? But, but God had an assignment. So to make a long story short, this was awesome. So the whole time, you know, I said, well, if you come, he says, if, you, if I go to church with you, you have to come to the college with me and watch me sword fight and all this stuff that I do and drink blood. I was like, I was like, okay, we'll make this agreement and this is what we'll do. So you come to church with me first and I'll go to the college with you. And then meanwhile, on Sundays, I like to be in there in the morning to open up just to be able to bless this day in Jesus, you know? Um, so, um, so, ah, so it gets to where he comes to church with me and then God starts dealing with me. He's like, Tracy, you cannot go to that college. I did not tell you to commit to that. I was like, I know, but I just gave my, this guy my word. He came to church three times. So, so I went over to him and I said, his name was Blake. I said, Blake, um, <laughs> not that Blake, another Blake. <laughs> yeah, this guy saved so, and the whole time we're all ministering, right? So we're all ministering, like, like all the time. And I'm pleading the blood over, the, like, when people walk into the place in the Rundle Mills. I'm declaring and pleading the blood. And we hung these ribbons that were anointed ribbons for salvation for everyone that came in that place, you know? So, um, so I said to him, I said, Blake, I made a mistake. I need to ask you to please forgive me for my word that I gave you. I need to be released from it. I cannot come to the college with you. Because I don't agree with this. And I can't do it. And I'm sorry. 
will you please forgive me and will you please release me from my word? And he did. He did. He released me completely. Now, the business went out of business. We all went our separate ways. The beginning of the new year. Um, remember I told you this whole family was saved and they were all Christians, right? This is somebody's prayers and action, by the way. Yeah, this is grandmom's prayers, parents' prayers. The beginning of the new year, you guys. <laughs> and this was worth every cent of that $50,000. Every cent of it. I, like I said, I wouldn't change it for the wor world. I don't care about money. I would give it all away. So we're in our new, we're in, under Bishop and we're in this building. We just crossed over into the new building that was built through the church and everything. And here comes this guy with his mom, his dad, his sister, his grandmom, his grandfather, his aunt, his uncle. All these people, right? He comes up to me, he gets right in front of me. He says, you don't know who I am, do you? This is only six months later. I looked at him, I said, no, I don't. Did I, did, I said, did I witness to you? Because I witness, I try to witness wherever I go. So I just figured it was somebody I witnessed to. He said, Tracy, it's Blake. I said, Blake! I said, oh my gosh, you're in a three-piece suit! <laughs> it wasn't even the fact that he was at the church. It was like there was no more black fingernail polish. This guy was, uh, you know, dressed to kill. He was in a three-piece suit, and he turns around, and he says, I want you to meet my whole family. And he, and, I, and he says, and, and I'm saved. And I'm here because I want to thank you. You know what I'm saying? So, so. <laughs> I still say it was only 35,000, but that's okay. We're, we're going to disagree, and especially since I got the mic now. But um, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Failure is most important that you fail forward, right? You want to learn the best out of everything you've done. And, and the main thing I learned is wisdom, right? And I, I want to say something because she brought up a key thing that I feel like, in fact, it's even on here, Tracy, is the excitement that drives us, right? My passion to believe God for something big was so strong that I stepped out of his will. It's really easy to happen, guys. I, I fell in it and I was really, really hungry and very, very radical for Jesus. But I was so excited that I got ahead of myself. And then when things started saying no, I didn't listen. My wife was one of those. My, the, 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 uh, Rundle Mills was putting all these restrictions and restraints to kind of strangle uh, prophets and things. And so I didn't listen because I was so excited. And so a lot of times when people come to us and they say, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, you're just kind of like, well, that's awesome. Uh, is that really what God's saying? It doesn't even matter at that point. Because they've already made up their minds and what they're coming to you about. And that the, sometimes it's just like, what can you do if they're saying God said this, that, the other? Woo! And then you, all you can do is watch them make a bad decision. And be there for them so they know that you love them through it. So one of the things on here, right, is, is the power of waiting. Okay, that, that is... <laughs> The power of waiting. No, 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 no. Wait, I got to tell them something. Wait, wait. So. I told you how strong her grip was. She's really getting there. So when, um, <laughs> basically what I wanted to share was, it's so awesome because God goes through everything with us. And even when God told me, you're going to walk through this with your husband. And he says, Tracy, I've walked through so much with you. Because, you know, I'll be honest, I was getting a little angry. I mean, I was. And it was festering inside of me a little bit. But God's love came in like a radical shift. And he just said, you need to walk through this because, you know, we walk through things with our children. We walk through things with our friends because of love. Sometimes they may say that this is what God's saying. And sometimes people around them in this ministry, I want to share with you, you may have a word or you may have discernment that maybe this isn't the best thing for somebody right now but if we just hang on and keep believing for their life and walk through it with them even if we don't like it even if we don't agree with it they're going to get free and that's what daddy does with us so many times we cause daddy to go places that he doesn't want to go and he's screaming no baby girl no son no don't walk that way because every decision you make, 
has an effect on your next day. So if he's graced enough to do that for us, we are graced enough to do that for one another. Yeah, that's beautiful. Amen. Thank you for your heart, Lord. Amen. <laughs> so the power of waiting, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing, but every seed has an assignment and every tree has a, has a season to bear fruit. Interesting thing is there's a supernatural element to everything that sometimes we don't wait for, right? The supernatural makes it obvious. Like when the tree branches are just uh, bowed down because of the weight of the fruitfulness, you could say, wow, God's on that. Everybody will tell you God's on that. You won't have to go like, I really feel it. It's like you don't have to step out of the boat. If you step out of the boat without Jesus calling you, Freddie, you can attest. Sometimes we have the walk on the water contest. You guys ever been that spiritual? On swimming pool? Come on. Okay, I'm by myself with Freddie. All right, me and Freddie. So we go like, come on, Jesus. And we just go like. And obviously Jesus wasn't calling us out on the deep, deep blue. Because we just sunk to the bottom. And, and, and what I'm saying is sometimes... Okay, come on. Every one of you got flaky stories. I'm just going to give you mine today. All right. Buffy the Vampire Slay, you stay back. I see it. <laughs> so, so the power of waiting is like when God gets on what, what you're doing, what you're commit, committing to God. In Proverbs it says that we plan our ways, but God establishes them. The establishment's what you're waiting for. The establishment is what you're waiting for. Your plans are awesome, and God wants to breathe on those plans, but he's like, will you wait for my breath? It's like Ezekiel's like, they look like an army. They look like we're going to take the land. They look amazing. They're all in line. They're all ready to go. They're all powerful. They're all mighty warriors. Most of us would have been, good enough, let's go. Some of us would have went with the skeleton army. Just take off early. Forget the skin. We got an army. Just whatever you want. And then all of a sudden, but Ezekiel had enough wisdom to say, Lord, there's more to this. There's life. What we do in this ministry, we don't want to do ministry. We want to do life. There's a difference, guys, right? There's a difference between doing ministry and doing life. Like what I do breathes life when I when I get involved I feel alive when that's what we want to be when you get plugged in you feel alive if you're not plugged in that could be the problem get plugged in guys because as we pursue the heart of God we don't want to be people that go through life and end up without a legacy we don't and I know most of you guys don't you might not be that far yet, and you might just be like, I don't know what you're talking about right now. Just listen to this. If you allow God to breathe on what you're doing today, just today, what you're doing today, you will start to sense what life really feels like. You know, I'm sitting there working. Sometimes I work. Friday night, I work till 3 a.m., me and Jeremy. I was teaching Jeremy computer stuff, and I, I, I love mentoring that much. We're, we're working. I work till 3 a.m., and you know what? I said, this is going to blow people's minds what we're doing right now. And I start going, God, I want you to breathe on this. And so what I look forward to is everything I do having the breath of God on it. I go into meetings. I go, watch what God does. We prayed for this. I had my intercessors connect. And I'm talking like all this language. They have no idea what favor is. I say, you know grace? Oh, yeah, grace. I get grace. Like, that's the church community, right? We talk about favor. They're like, I don't understand. Well, gr favor is grace that you actually try to use. Gr grace is more than just like a magic word that gets me into the doors of heaven. Thank you, Jesus, I made it. There is grace on your life for an, a, re a reason, right? There's an anointing that you carry. And Tr Tracy asked this question earlier, and she can allude to her reasoning for this question. But a lot of people don't understand the, the difference between the anointing and between um, the glory and between gr grace and favor. The, the anointing is something that you house. The anointing also is the smearing of the lamb. The, the fact that you feel like your big brother. Uh, a good picture is, is, uh, is Jacob going into his dad for the blessing. 
Dad, I came for the, for the blessing. And his dad reaches out and says, you sound like Jacob, but you feel like Jesus. And he feels the fur, he feels the, he feels the woolly, hairy arm, thinks it's Esau. But it's really, that's a great picture of what it is. You sound like one, but you feel like the right one. So I'm going to bless it. And so the, the, the anointing is when we're ha- we're, we, we spent time with Jesus. We've put on the coat and we go before the king and we say, can I, have, can I have this? And he says, you feel like Jesus, go for it. Everything you ask for in my name, in my coat, in my shoes, if you want. Walk a mile in his shoes, you know. Everything you want, feel like Jesus. And then when you feel like Jesus, he says, let it be. Let it happen. Make it so. And then that that happens. So the anointing is literally what you house. But the glory is what heaven says in agreement. So Jesus literally walked a life where he watched the cloud and he agreed with all of his anointing to what heaven was saying. You know, there's people in the world that have an anointing that don't follow heaven at all. They're called witch doctors, right? Witch doctors can do supernatural things by the anointing that God blessed them with. Without God at all. So there's a huge difference between the anointing and glory. And sometimes we try to, you could push in and, and try to go where, where God's not necessarily going. And, and the reality is you can even get some fruit. Some is the key. Do you want to walk a life where you work really hard for some? Or do you want to walk a life where you, where you enter into the blessing of heaven? Where 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 the glory is, is kind of showering down with what you're agreeing to. And so part of that is, is key to what we're, what we're trying to, to, to convey today. Is like the ability to say, God, where is this favor at in my life? And let me start using it. And I would rather you start really small. Patricia King literally just blew up. Like last night was just... It was mesmerizing. You know why? Because the week before I told you, T.D. Jakes was talking about never despise the day of small beginnings, right? This, one week later, Patricia King does the exact same thing. I mean, she's talking about phone book evangelism. She's talking about driving down the road just to look for homeless people to give rides to. With hitchhikers, with her kids in the back. Just her and her kids. She said she doesn't suggest anyone does that. And... You have to hear the Lord and all that. But here's the thing. She's talking about stuff that is so minute in most people's eyes to what ministry looks like. Because they're waiting for the big door to open. Instead of the small seed to plant. And so because we're not willing to give that encouraging word to a friend in need. Then we expect to be prophetic one day. The prophetic came because you stepped out of the boat, because you used what you had. There's some people sitting on some incredible gifts right in this house. And if you don't pull your gifts out and start distributing them, you're going to be a person with a lot of gifts that went dormant a long time ago. you got to take the toolbox, open that thing up, and start distributing. By reason of use, you're going to start exercising what God has put in you. When you start doing that, guys, you'll start seeing what you've been waiting for instead of waiting for what you can't see. You're like, oh, this is too small to do anything. Don't worry about the size of what you have. Worry about the heart in which you do it. God, I just thank you. This is all I have. Most of my life, I feel like this is all I have, God. And it, just go for it. <laughs> We're not always going to be perfect. We're not always going to do things the best. But the point of God is hand in hand walking it out with you. Amen. Amen. So you have something on the waiting before we go to the next one? No? When she was talking about the hitchhikers last night, um, this is a story I think I've only shared one time publicly. But I'll share it. And Freddie, I guard your heart in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Um, a while back before I was really saved, um, I had Freddie in the back seat of my car. He was about 
No, this wasn't for Jesus. I said it was before I was saved. He was about three. Um, and, you know, I was in my own will. You know, so like when he was talking about witch doctors doing things, I started thinking about how, you know, even in that, they don't understand what they're getting ready to reap from things that they're sowing in their own self. So, you know, God <laughs> keeps his promises. And, and they're not getting, I mean, they may do whatever little bit that they can do, but they are not getting away with what they're doing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's, so, so basically it made me think about, um, I was out driving and, you know, I was trying to get drugs, get money, um, all that, and, you know, picked up some people. Next thing I know, um, they got a knife to my son's throat in the back seat of my car, and he's three, because they wanted my money. You know, I, I had a goal, okay, but they had a goal too. And, you know, it was just, you know, the person with me said, Tracy, because cause they kept asking for my money, and I'm driving, right? And I'm like, you aren't getting my money. I mean, I have no idea what's going on in the back seat because I can't see. So I'm arguing with them on top of everything else because I was so determined in myself. And then um, my friend was like, Tracy, you need to give them your money. I'm like, we're not going to be able to get high if I give them our money. What are you talking about? And then her and I start arguing, right? (laughs) But come to find out, when I finally turned around and look, they're sitting there like this to my son's throat. It wasn't long before I gave them my money, gave them my jewelry. I used to wear a ring on every finger. I gave them everything I had, emptied my purse. And, um, but what I want to share is, because what brought me to think that was, when I got saved, I picked up all kind of people all the time. All kind. And gave people rides. I, I dropped people off places. I met people I didn't know. I went out on evangelism trips looking to pick up people to bring them to church and do you know by the grace of God not one time did I ever have a problem with anybody because my motive and my heart was connected to the kingdom and I was protected by the blood of Jesus so there is so much difference in our intentions and in our heart when we do things and how God lets things happen if my son's throat would have been slit that day I would have probably been in a saint asylum number one and, and number two, live with it all my life. And, and number three, I had no one to blame but me. May I may never have gotten saved, okay? Because what if I chose to blame God instead because I was raised in a Catholic school and I knew who God was? Do you see what I'm saying? So there was an assignment to prevent my salvation, and there was an assignment trying to prevent me from even going deeper. So, so okay. So basically, I want to ask some people, uh, what is your favor? Miss Ann, do you know your favor? (laughs) Your favor falls in evangelism and prayer. That's awesome. It does because that's your passion. So when you carry that, where you go. Nancy, do you know your favor? Teaching? Okay, teaching and counseling. That's awesome. Um, Do you know your favor, young man? To find God? Okay. Um, what's your passion? You don't know yet? Well, what do you love to do? Just think about you. Like, what do you love to do? You don't know yet? Okay, well, you will. In the name of Jesus, we just pray right now, Father God, that as he stays more devout in learning who you are, Lord, that you have a lot of good and perfect things in store for his life, Father God. Do you want to accept Jesus today as your Lord and Savior? You do? Okay, can I get a couple men to pray with you? Are you ready to really do that? Do you know what that means? That's right. Amen. It's the right answer. Okay, can I get Brooke Sr. and Roy and maybe Lee? If the three of you could pray with him, please. Okay. So that would be awesome. Are you DeAndre? Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> um, Ronnie, do you know what your favor is? Okay, you want to pass? Don, do you know what your favor is? Teaching and hospitality, okay? This is good because this is helping us learn about each other as well. See, favor is really what you're passionate about. And when you know what that passion is, you can walk that out anywhere you go and be bold in it and know that you have favor 
and that every door is going to open for you before you even get there because God's already gone before you because of the favor. So the Lord, here's some good examples. Some of you guys said teaching. So here's a good example. Like when you, when you, um, here's what a lot of people would do and they would wait for an opportunity to teach versus finding the opportunity to teach. And so a lot of times, like, there's a lot of young ladies in the church that don't know the word of God, for example. If you'd instead of looking for, a lot of people would go like, let me find a place where I can, you know, let me find a classroom where everybody's listening. If you actually be the person that's constantly, I mean, I look for everybody to teach. I, I love, I love, like, teaching people how to do anything. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like, hey, look, this is how you do electric. Hey, look, this is how you do computers. Hey, look, this is how, and it's because it's in my heart, right? But I don't wait for, like, the microphone to teach. I wait for the person that has a hungry heart. And so you, you connect yourself with the, with the opportunity, and the opportunity opens a greater door. So as you begin to start mentoring and teaching and showing what you're, what you're passionate about, then you start seeing the Lord say, oh, you were passionate and you taught one. Here's another one. Oh, here's another one. Oh, here's another one. You listen to Patricia King's story. It's filled with people that she picked up, that she prayed that they would get saved on the way to where they were going. And then people she opened a phone book to and they got saved. And now you say, like, how is she on that stage? How does she have her own media program? How does she have her own television show? And you look at all these things and you can't put the dots together. That's what was so amazing. It's like that's not what you have to do. You have to take something small and place it in the ground. You have to start planting, be a, be a seed planter, and then start going, God, you said that the reaper would overtake the sower. I, I'm looking for more than this, but I'm faithful where I'm at. And you start doing that, and God starts going, hey, look. Uh, hey, look at this. Look at, look at Nancy. Look at the way she's just mentoring all these people. She needs to run a, a class in the specific area that she's drawn toward. So it begins to define itself. You begin to define your own passion because you find yourself in him. Amen? Amen. So we're going to get ready to wrap up. But, um, you know, we don't want anything to hinder you in this, in this mission of finding the purpose and the will and the favor of God for your lives. And, and part of this is really, um, this year we're going to be really focused a lot on discipleship, right? We said that. So our, our, our goal is intimacy, discipleship, and evangelism. Discipleship means that we're putting very much intention on the growth of others. Jesus wants to call people out of the boat. But a lot of times you're looking to walk on waves and winds, storms are blowing. And you're like, if Jesus would call me out on that. If he would call me to a crusade. If he would call me to a third world country. It's like, if you want to be a missionary to a third world country, do you evangelize today? Do you talk to one person in a whole week about Jesus? Because you don't have to worry about evangelizing to third world countries and doing crusades if you don't even witness one time a week. And so our grandiose pictures don't ever start small stepping stones to get there. And so we want to bring all that grandiose things down to an easy to follow path which Jesus led day by day. Talking to a Samaritan woman sitting on a well with her and saying do you know that I'm the living water. She, he's sitting here with somebody he shouldn't be talking to. Who's, who's been with five different husbands. She's been around the block. And he's spending his time with somebody that's from a culture he shouldn't be talking to. And she's a woman he shouldn't be talking to. People could get the wrong impression. And all these things. And he doesn't care about any of it. He cares about the woman in front of him. Yeah. If we could start having the heart of Jesus. Yeah. In these small things. Then we can have the heart of Jesus in the big things. Jesus wants to do great things. Freddie, the cave wants to do what God's called it to do. It even wants to be bigger than you anticipated. And it's the, the cave is looking for a people whose heart are in alignment with heaven and doing the small things in everything they do and not worried about the big picture, but they're doing the evangelistic. They're spending the time with the Lord. They're, they're getting radical about their love for Jesus. And so when we start fueling the right fire, instead of full, fueling grandiose plans and talking to everybody about what we're going to do, listen, what we're going to do is a hill of beans until you start to do. 
Let's start to do. Let's start to find somebody that needs Jesus. Let's start to tell them about Jesus. Let's go ahead and start to pray instead of talking about prayer. Let's go ahead and read 10 chapters instead of talking about reading the Bible. Let's go ahead and see what I'm saying. We need to start becoming what we're speaking if we're ever going to get where God has called us to be. Amen? Amen. A doer of the word and not a hearer only. <laughs> Yes, that's so good. So I look, I look at, I get really, I get really excited about people's big plans, but I get more excited when they start making small steps. It's like, get out of your atrophy and start just like, even if it's hard to take a step, just go for it. You know, I don't care. Even if I fall, I'm going for it. Just take your steps, start moving forward and then we can start worrying about where you're going to go what you're going to do all those things being too far in the future is usually the reason why people get tired in the midst because if we could just say if I could just make it to the first row and you start to walk and you're like this is very uncomfortable it's so uncomfortable for me to witness just to give you a heads up not for Tracy for me Tracy is crazy I don't know what God put in her Wheaties, but she has some incredible people favor passion stuff. And I'm like, Tracy, I'm witnessing with you. Yeah, we're going to be brave. And I hide behind her. You go in. Go in, Tiger. Get him. <laughs> she breaks the ice, and I'm like, okay, now I feel like they actually want to do something. They want to talk. I'm sharing that because it's not my favor. I'm like so nervous, and if I've been I've been like the leader in in a two two person evangelism, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this person thinks I'm good at this. This is terrible. Oh, hi. <laughs> That's good, honey. She said, whenever he has fear, I can finally have faith. That's funny. So. We don't want anything to hinder you guys. And um, do you want to share this last point? Well, I can. <laughs> God shows us even, even when we have different faiths. So, he, 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 so basically, he wants me to share the part about how much God loves us all, and all of our favor looks different from Papa. And that's the, the key of our heart, and the reason that God gave me this message is get off my favor because you have your own is because the intercession was coming through me for every one of you. Because every one of you is so loved by him. So loved by him and have so much to do for him. That I want you to have that freedom and favor. I want you to know what your favor is. I don't, we don't mind sharing our favor with, with all of us in here. Like We don't mind sharing our favor with each other if it's needed. But let's get to a place. That, that we can have that faith inside of us and that boldness inside of us, that confidence sitting on Papa's lap, just being able to receive, that we have that favor. And that as a children of God, if you're on a kingdom assignment, no is not an answer. It's not an answer from anybody. We, we have to really know that. Because sometimes I think we walk away too easy. Guys, if God's given you an assignment, God's going to give the provision. And as Jesus earned favor with God and earned favor with man, that's what we're doing. But we need to exercise that faith like, like Pastor David was saying earlier. And we also need to know, like, I'm on a kingdom assignment and this is what Papa wants. And... You can't really stand in my way because he might just flip the boat over on you to get you out of my way. You're either going to walk on water with me or he's going to flip you over. You're not going to drown. You're going to be okay. But he's just going to flip the boat over and get you out of the boat. So it's much easier. It's much easier just to walk with him because he will do, he will do little things because he loves us that much to make sure we're in tune with him. No, also let us be taught as we need to be taught. But it's so important 
And, you know, I just really want to, I mean, I just really feel that it's in me to just really pray and release the favor of God over you guys. So if, if um, because there is so much for this upcoming year, and there is so much. I mean, opening up the second location, for instance, we're, we're going to need two and three worship teams. You know, we're going to need teachers. We're going to need evangelists. We're going to need prayer people. But I shouldn't say we're going to need. Because that sounds wrong, even in my heart by me saying that. The kingdom is going to request. That's the better way. The kingdom is going to request you. And is your yes going to be yes? Or are you going to tell Papa no because it's not in your schedule? Well, (laughs) first I tripped and then I got, so he just said the master will have need of you. And, and all of you know that we are a ministry for the kingdom that believe in 100% serving. So, Lord, I just want to release. If everybody could just stand to your feet, please. Uh, we could just pray like this if you want. All right, we're going to um, pray. But um, if we could actually do a CD, because I want um, the, the, the worship team, if they feel led to be in the line, I don't want to uh, have you on the um, thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to